All right, what I would like to do is explain what in the world this scatter plot matrix is. Um, there's a lot going on here, so I wanted to take a minute to kind of explain what's going on. So what I did is I went to R, tried to find a data set that would allow me to create a scatter plot matrix. So we're in sort of a multiple regression setting. And uh, R has a bunch of sort of built-in data sets. They are a little on the old side. So what I found was this life cycle savings data set. So if you do doll uh, uh, question mark and then type that in you'll get some details on the data set so you could just run this line again and you should um, get the information so what I did is pulled just a couple of variables from that so SR that's our response and it's a personal savings measurement and so what the uh, authors of this study were trying to do is model this personal savings measurement by using a couple of different variables now I only grabbed a couple the the details of the study again are all on R and it is a bit more complicated but again the goal for this video is just to explain what a scatter plot matrix is giving you so just to give you some context, SR, that is our response, and that represents personal savings. And then we have two demographic variables. So um, populate or POP15, that's just the name of the variable that contains information on the percent of the population that is under 15 years old. And then also POP75 is over 75 years old. And then DPI, that's just a real per capita disposable income measurement. Uh, so if we're trying to model SR, our response, we're going to use these three variables to try and do it. Now first off, you would need to create a scatter plot matrix. And the way that you do this is using the pairs function. So with pairs, you can type in the name of the response and then explanatory variable plus explanatory variable plus and then you just keep listing them depending on how many explanatory variables you have and then data equals life uh, life cycle savings that's the name of the data set now um, when you just run that all by itself you actually get some panels down here you get essentially a mirror image of this but I don't find it very helpful. So what I do is I just turn that lower panel off. So lower dot panel equals null. And so that leaves me essentially this little space just blank and I'm not getting confused by way too many things, right? And then uh, the default is a blank circle. I just feel like that looks a little messy. So I like filled in circles. So I added that PCH equals 19. So then the points are all filled in. So now that I have this scatter plot matrix, again, I'm just really explaining what you get. And it's just a bunch of individual scatter plots. Right? And so I can blow each one of these plots up by just essentially using SR as the response variable and then uh, using either POP15, POP75, or DPI as the explanatory variable. Sometimes though that's a lot of graphs to stare at and it's if I just need a quick overview of what's going on then this matrix again I'm really just thinking of how are those points what do the points look like not really too concerned about the scales because this is just honestly stuff that I don't really look at very much it's kind of confusing and I don't really need it when I create this graph so when it comes to this top row if this is my response well then on this y-axis we have SR and on this x-axis we have POP15. Okay, so that's that first one. So again, it's just like a scatter plot. I can see that there is a, a bit of a negative trend. Overall seems to be, you know, pretty linear. A couple of maybe potential outliers, but nothing really standing out too bad. Okay, so now the relationship between SR, so that's my y-axis again, and now since we're looking at the um, POP75 column, POP75 is on this x-axis. And so what do I see between the, the that response and that explanatory variable? Oh, maybe a slightly positive trend. Um, overall looks fairly linear, 
Uh, maybe if I stare really hard, there's just a hint of curvature, right? If I kind of get rid of these, I can see that the points maybe just have a little bit of a, a curve there. Um, but that would be between SR and POP75. And so then finally, this very last graph again has SR over on the Y axis. And since this is our last variable here on the X axis, we have DPI. And so the relationship between SR and DPI seems a little bit more clumped. Look, I've got a little clumping there. Um, you know, I do have some outliers, but oh, it, it does almost look like there's a little bit of a, a curve, just a slight hint of a curve. Do you see that? Okay, so one of the things that we have to assess is linearity. So I could use this normal, or I'm sorry, the... Um, Scatter plot matrix to assess a linear relationship between our response and each one of the explanatory variables. And that's one way I could do that. Now, if I'm assessing linearity, I really should have residual plots made as well, because I kind of use both of those to determine, gosh, do I really have a linear relationship or not? One other thing that we use the scatter plot matrix for is to determine if there is a strong uh, correlation between any of the explanatory variables. And so for that, I'm looking at these graphs down below. Uh, because this one right here, I kind of have my eye on. It's the relationship between POP15 and POP75. And so I do see that between these two explanatory variables, we could call this like an X1 or an X2, it seems like there's a relationship there. I see, a, you know, a bit of a, a trend. Now, I don't know if I would call this strong uh, if I were to find the correlation coefficient between POP15 and POP75. You know, I might eyeball that and guess it's about a 0.7. So it's not strong enough for me to just go ahead and get one, get rid of one of these variables. Um, but certainly, I would, you know, want to look for any really strong relationship in these graphs here, any strong linear relationship. Because if I did see that, I would have to get rid of one of those variables. Maybe I, you know, could get rid of POP15. Again, if I saw a relationship that was super strong, maybe something more along the lines of this. So if I saw POP15 and pop 75 and this is what I saw I would think oh gosh those explanatory variables are pretty strongly correlated with each other I really don't need both of them in my model all right so th those are the two primary uses for this scatter plot matrix one to assess a linear relationship between the response and each explanatory variable. So I would use that top row provided that the top row does have the response over here on the edge and then the other thing that I can uh, use this graph for is to determine if there's any multicollinearity, or in other words, two explanatory variables that are uh, very highly correlated with each other. All right, I hope this helped answer any questions that you might have had about the graph.